Welcome back for another episode of Oh, you mean with? Oh, with Marina And Dre um, Today is going to be one of our storytelling videos a Quarantine story. Quarantine story whenever we was out there in Panama Our last day It was our last day in Panama You know, we didn't get the chance to like video record that day We was in like such in a rush because somebody decided to sleep in I'm not going to say who But um, we was running behind, you know, we was running behind and You know, we've been getting around on Panama on our own for the most part through the bus system The metro And the metro It was you know. a breeze Yeah, it was pretty, it was pretty, it was, it was pretty Put easy Put it on the phone, it was a breeze Yeah, so, so, anyway so, On our last day, we weren't worried about it Yeah, so, I mean, a little bit worried, but not much, you know But on our last day, we was like, okay, well We'll just catch, you know, the bus or the train or whatever to the airport. You know what I mean? And, and, and you know, at first I kind of was a little bit, well, by that time I was fine with it. But anyway, so we decided to use public transportation to get to the airport and... It was cheaper. Yeah, it was cheaper and it was also nerve-wracking for us. I'm going to let her do the storytelling. The reason we don't have the footage for the last day is because we lost it. Mm. And I think we lost it because of the spy. I call him a spy. But this is what happened to us. Okay, it was the last day. We were so used to the metro and the train that we weren't really worried about it. We wanted to be there early, but we had to be there around like maybe 3. I think our flight was leaving at 3. I don't know the time anyway, exactly, but you that's know, true. all I know is we was running behind because I was pretty upset. Yes, I kept sleeping in, kept pushing the time back and back, so I'm like, I'll get up, I'll get up. Then when it was time for us to leave, it was still a little bit early, but we were kind of cutting it close a little bit, but it was a, a leeway a little bit. Then whenever we left, we saw, okay, we had left the apartment, started walking. He had on, uh, what you have on? A baseball hat, Astros hat. An Astros baseball hat. What, yeah. And then this man who was sweating. I don't know, this guy. And looked, some looked off. He just seemed like he just came out of nowhere. Like he just popped up in front of us, you know what I mean? And keep in mind, we were walking with suitcases in our hand yeah. and his Astro hat. Then the man said what? He, I don't know, he just, he just stopped and he was like, oh, you from, what did he say, you from Houston or something like that? Yeah. I'm like, yeah. And I'm thinking, you know, he lives there or something like that. You know, I'm not thinking much of it, you know what I mean? So I answered the question, yeah. And he's like, I guess he's seen our backs. He's like, oh, you're leaving. You're going to the airport. And we were like, yeah, which probably shouldn't say that either. Well, but that suitcase was a giveaway. Give away, you know what I mean? <laughs> so the next thing I know, he was like, oh, I'm going there too. Uh, we probably riding the same plane, or you know, he was just saying all kinds of stuff. But he seemed very. He was fidgety. He yeah, was like, like he was nervous. Oh my god, you guys are going. And yeah, I, I, you guys, mm -hmm. what time is your flight? I look because we had our stuff. It was like three. He was like, mine too, mine yeah. too. Can mm -hmm. I come with you guys? We frog like, uh, like no, you can't come with us. <laughs> but considering how nice people was to us when we was out there in Panama, they were so nice. They helped know. us with so much. There were so many kind people in Panama. Yeah. We talk, pretty much looked at ourselves and, and convinced ourselves. This is the way we convinced ourselves to go along with it. Is these people are so nice to us strangers? Then who are we? Who've been helped to say no to somebody else who needs help? Yeah. So we ended up telling him. Like, yeah, you know, you can come with us, you know, to the airport. And he was like, and another reason why we gave in, too, because he was like, um, my my speech is bad, you know. Oh, yeah, he like I can't, you know, speak English properly. No, and was it English, Spanish? Both, both of them, Spanish, Spanish and English. And uh, he was like, I don't know, he just, he just said a whole bunch of weird things. And remind you, we running late. And he's, this man is sweating, looking like he just came from a, a 10 mile jog run. Like, that's so, how he was looking. So, we running late. And, uh, you know, he's like, I haven't ate anything. Oh, I need to go get my you stuff know, from, he, the hot, from the hotel, which was right there, mm -hmm. the same hotel we were in. Which was like legit right there. So, we were like, okay, fine, we'll wait for you to go get your bag. He was like, oh, I'm going to go get breakfast too. We're like, no, we don't have that much time. He's like, okay, I'll just grab some stuff and go. 
So we're like far away from you. When he went, we over here looking at ourselves like, what did we get ourselves into? But then eventually, we're like, okay, he's come. He ended up coming back out. We started walking, and this man started telling us all types of stories. Yeah, I came here already with some other people, and then they left him. He didn't like those people he was with, so he didn't want to be with them anymore. Then he got taken up with some, got kidnapped by other people, and they drugged him. And he's like, I'm just now getting back, and I just got here last night. And so we were just like... I don't know. The guy's what story the guy's the guy's story was just all over the place. And then he was like he was from like different places. He's like, yeah, I'm somewhere from Europe, somewhere from Canada. And it was just so much stuff that he was saying that we couldn't process everything. I mean we're trying to understand, but it was things weren't fitting together. But we we're like, whatever. So we kept going and we go to the bus. Keep in mind we're now running late because we're waiting for this man. And we did not have Wi Fi on our phone. So Without the Wi-Fi, we pretty much are kind of screwed, you know, because the buses change. Anyway, so we get on the Metro bus. This man sits, sits down, and he opens up his backpack. He had a little backpack. He was taking his passport and clothes out the bag. Then we'll put him back in the bag. And then all these other Panamanians are looking at him like... What's wrong with him? And then because that man talking to us, he looked at us like, what's wrong with you too? Mm. You know? And we're like, you know, this it was so uncomfortable for us, but we kept talking to the poor man. Then eventually, when we got off the bus, the metro, no, 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 we got off the train. We got off the train. We were going to find the bus now. Mm -hmm. Now, we didn't know because our GPS gave up on us. Like, the bus wasn't where it was supposed to be. So now we're starting to ask other people. Keep in mind, this man said he did not know any Spanish. Well, he acted like he knew no Spanish like us. So we over here all scrambling. We go to another section. We start asking like a bus driver. And this man, we turn around, what this man doing? Talking in Spanish. In fluent <laughs> Spanish. And then now, and then we had other people looking at us suspiciously. So now we're like, are we about to get kidnapped here? Because this is a really... Like it was a really weird situation. I so don't know. it was it was crazy. So now we couldn't even trust who he was talking to because we didn't know if he was in with him. Mm -hmm. So we to be smart, we would actually look around and I would ask other people to I asked multiple other people myself. So we felt like we kinda had control of this situation, not we not just the followers, you know? So eventually those two people we talked to and he spoke to came together, especially there was this lady. This young lady who helped us out. We got on the bus, and she helped us the rest of the way. But I will, I do need to include this part. Whenever I noticed this part, this guy was already kind of sketchy. I was like, just in case something happens, I want to at least take a picture of this man. But I had to be sneaky about it, only because you know if you get caught, they can maybe check your phone or anything to track this person. So, cause he already, we had our cameras with us, our phones with us. So I tried to pretend like we're vlogging. And I was like, yeah, we're going home. But all I was really doing was trying to get a video of his face on my phone. So eventually I got it. But I, when I look back at the video, he saw me put him in, the, in my phone. Like he saw his face on the phone. So I was just glad. I didn't even care about it. I got it, you know. So this girl helped us get to the actual, to the actual airport. Like she helped she helped us get there, and the man's still with us. So we at the airport finally, and you know, whenever we actually we, we get off the bus, we get off the bus, and we together, and then once we into the airport, he disappeared on us, didn't he? He disappeared. Is he doing a magic trick now? I don't know. He I don't know. He disappeared. Next thing I know, somebody come from the back, and they're like, "Hey, can I get in front of y'all?" I'm like, "You've been going for them almost an hour." You can't just skip all these people and get in front of us. We don't even know you. You know, you're not with us. The line was long. I'm like, you got to get in the back. So he gets in the back of the line. He gets in the back of the line. And then another 30 minutes go by. And he's like talking to some people back there, whatever. And the next thing I know, he disappears again. Gets out the line after he been waiting in line, disappears. Line is long. So by this time, we about to get on the plane, right? 
And then, then we run him before we got on the plane again. No, or on the plane. It was we on got the plane, right? before we got into the plane. Before we got before, to the because plane, because you had to go through another. Che- there's another area before you get inside the plane. They had to do your security another, again. Another check in, right? Yeah, and we were like the last ones. Yeah. And then he popped up right behind us. Popped out of nowhere. I don't know where. Like, where the hell you got out that line? We was like the last ones. The last ones, like they put the the clothesline and everything like this is it nobody else getting on and somehow he he appeared out of nowhere i'm like how the hell you, how you get over here you know because he didn't go through the line with us the line was i don't think you guys realize think of the long like the disney world line you know how long them lines be all circles like that? that's how the airport lines were and he left the line so how you magically get through mm-hmm. unless you skip it i don't know i don't know but the crazy part about it though is whenever we got on the plane and I don't know. It was a bunch of empty seats on this particular plane. It was a few seats that was empty. And just, I don't understand, just the biggest coincidence, like for him to be sitting right with us. Right with us. That is, was he in front of us? He was in front of us. In front of but us. But I mean, like, he, out of all the seats on that plane that was available, he was sitting, his, his seat, number seat, was with where we were sitting at. Mm-hmm. Ain't that something? Yeah, it's something. I was like, what the hell? And he had the whole world to himself, too. He was that knocked, is true. He was knocked out on that thing. The whole flight was asleep. But at the end of the day, it was no right. We're yeah. glad we made it to the airport uh-huh. and everything. And then it was his birthday. It was his 30th birthday. Mm-hmm. And I'm telling you, the skies were so beautiful. Like, you know when you're above, with, above the clouds and the sun is setting and all the beautiful colors? That's how it was. So I was like, he had, to me, I was like, he had the best birthday being above the sky seeing that. And I had the footage of all of that also. But then when we landed, I think it was it even a whole day? I don't know. I think it wasn't a full 24 hours. My phone magically broke, stopped working. And I never dropped it. Nothing happened to it. Like I was just touching it. And then I don't know, it went boom. And it really just stopped working. It was just a green screen. But you couldn't see anything else. So I tried to go get it like fixed and recover it. They were like, you can't recover it. My phone magically stopped working. It was that spot. Because he knew we caught him. He, he shouldn't have been caught. That's probably what it is. I got him on camera. And he, as, as his job as a spy, he found a way to make my phone to stop working. Because I lost that whole footage. Like, it's a, it's a miracle we even got some footage from Panama. Because from us doing it on your phone. But we had so much more footage than we had. And to this day, I still call him a spy. Because I don't understand how my phone stopped working out of nowhere. Uh, but it was a day I, ain't, I can't forget. I can't either. That was a nerve-wracking day. It was stressful because we were over here the entire time like that. But it's an experience. It was fun. It was fun still. Panama was still amazing. Yeah. But... Really nice. But that's, yeah. that's our quarantine story. <laughs> <laughs> All right. See you next week. <laughs> or see you next time. <laughs> From Marida. Enjoy. All right. <laughs>